And now, after all that work and all that notation, we finally have the Taylor series formula. In the multivariate case, if we expand about zero, then it looks like the following. We take the sum over all multi-indices, capital I, of 1 over I factorial times the ith derivative of f evaluated at zero times the monomial term x to the i. That's it. If you want to chop it off after a certain number of terms, maybe just take all multi-indices of order less than or equal to k, then that is a polynomial and a good approximation to f near zero, where all the inputs are zero. But what do you do if you want to Taylor expand about some other input, let's say a? Well, in this case, you could simply use the same formula, but instead of a polynomial in x, you have a polynomial in the quantity x minus a. Or, if you prefer, you can use a local variable, h, equal to x minus a, do a little substitution, a little change of variables there, and then you get the formula that appears in the bottom, which is a polynomial in h. Okay, this is what the general Taylor series looks like. It seems kind of hard. How would you compute such a thing? Well, don't worry. We're going to deal with that later. We're going to learn some new uh, ideas, some methods. It's going to be helpful there. To close things out, a couple of remarks. Things to keep in mind. First of all, we haven't talked about convergence at all. As you know, when you have a series, you have to compute a radius of convergence and stay within it. In the multivariate case, it can get complex. Haha, <laughs> we're not going to explore that here at all, but do remember to pay attention to convergence. Now, we know what a first derivative looks like, right? That's a linear transformation. Are higher derivatives matrices as well, or something like matrices? Well, that answer is not so simple, as you might have guessed from the complexity of the Taylor formula. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but not too much.